Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Go To Kitchen's Lunch with Leslie. How's everybody doing? I'm looking over at Periscope. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Welcome in. It's Friday. It is the day that you've all been waiting for. Sorry for camera shake, just making sure I'm getting everything correct. How are you guys doing? It's Friday, it's Friday. <laughs> hey Sherry, thanks for being here. Ozzy's here. Huda Saint is here. That's a cute name, I love it. <laughs> Lexi's here. Welcome, Lexi. By the way, hey Melody, it's good to see you. Julie's here. So Facebook, I'm talking to Periscope people because I do a broadcast. I'm actually live on Periscope right now and live on Facebook all at the same time. Janie's here. Allie's mom is here. <laughs> Hi, Meg. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming in. Okay, so it's the fermentation you've all been waiting for. There's Robin. Can you see him? There he is. Oh, he's back. <laughs> thank you. That's sweet. Thank you. Thank you. It's my, uh, it's my like go-to shirt. It's like the shirt that I put on when I don't want to think about what I have to put on. It's just comfortable and wonderful. So, and it has been a crazy week. If you don't know, we have been filming the Kitchen Anatomy classes all week long, and we just wrapped this morning, and I'm super excited. They are going to be great videos. The class is going to be a lot of fun. So, hey, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Hey, Sherry. Sherry's here. Sherry's in the house. <laughs> I just always have to give you a hard time, Sherry. All right, guys, let's get started. Let me introduce myself. My name is Leslie. I have a website, gotokitchens.com. That is, is it. I am, actually, that is it, gotokitchens.com. The website is not $99. The class, Kitchenatomy, is $99, and it's in pre-sale right now. And if you want to know more, hang out through these uh, live broadcasts, and we'll talk more about it. So... So, who wants to grow a SCOBY? How many of you are growing your own SCOBY right now? How many of you don't even know what a SCOBY is? Say, gr type in grow if you're growing your own SCOBY and type in no idea. <laughs> you don't even know what a SCOBY is. <laughs> grow, awesome, good for you. Nope, don't know what it is. All right, awesome. Well, we're gonna teach you today. Not me, not me. <laughs> I love it. Scoby babies, you grow your own. Love it. All right. I'm going to teach you how to grow one from scratch. <laughs> Tell Robin Tim. Yeah, he does, right? He looks like Tim Allen's neighbor, the fence guy, Wilson. <laughs> oh, by the way, if I haven't asked you already, please share it with your followers. You can do that live here on Facebook. Uh, just hit share just like you do any broadcast or any post on Facebook. And here on Periscope, there's Edison right down here in the corner. You can share out. So <laughs> I know he's hiding behind his computer back there. <laughs> he just finished lunch. I'm, I'm luck. I'm jealous because I want to eat lunch. <laughs> the time zones have aligned. I love it. I love it. That is exactly what a SCOBY is. A SCOBY is a symbiotic colony of the bacteria and yeast. And this <laughs> is what a SCOBY looks like. This right here, see him in there? That yellow part of this is actually a SCOBY. I'm safe today because I have my lid on. If you guys watch my broadcast, I think it was either Tuesday or Thursday, I had the lid off and I was like, this is what a SCOBY looks like. And I did that and kombucha went all over my floor and it is so hard to clean up, right? I know, no more sticky floors. So a SCOBY is this guy right here. And this is a colony of bacteria and yeast. And basically, it starts from a mushroom type of bacteria. That's where the original SCOBYs came from. Because you have to think about it. There had to be an original SCOBY. What came first? <laughs> the SCOBY or the kombucha? So there had to be an original SCOBY somewhere, right? Somewhere there had to be this original SCOBY. And this is a, a element of that SCOBY. This is a product of that original SCOBY. Because we use, we use other kombuchas that have this bacteria and yeast in it to make SCOBYs. So I'm going to teach you guys a simple trick on how to grow your own. This is super easy. I know some of you want to brew kombucha on your own but you have no idea how to do it. If you don't know what kombucha is, kombucha, 
<laughs> kombucha is, um, this is GT Brands, one of my favorites, um, but kombucha is a fermented tea. So traditionally, um, yes, they can go bad. Actually, don't go bad, they die. They just die off because that's like, think about living enzymes like in yogurt and things like that. You, you think about cultures that are alive. That uh, that SCOBY is actually living in there. So you're you're consuming living plant food essentially when you're when you're drinking kombucha. But kombucha is traditionally a black tea that is uses sugar to feed a SCOBY or a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. So the sugar actually feeds the bacteria. Excuse me, what does kombucha taste like? That's a great question. Kombucha tastes like a sweet tart tea, in my opinion. Now, there are tons of flavors, and there's more coming out all the time. All the time, all the time, there are more and more kombucha flavors coming out. This is GT's original, and for growing a SCOBY, this is what we're going to use. Like beer. Um... I don't think it tastes so much like beer, but I mean, I can see where some, some of it is pretty stout, so I can understand that. So you can use different types of teas. Absolutely. You can use all different types of teas. You can use green teas. I wouldn't actually recommend um, total decaffeinated teas just because of the process that they go to get the decaf, the, the caffeine out. Um, but yes, but Yes, so that is, <laughs> you love the one in your head. Heather here on Facebook says, I love the one you have in your head, I have in your hand. I love this brand too. GTs, if I'm going to buy it and not make my own and brew my own, <laughs> I know it is kind of creepy, right? <laughs> like English breakfast tea, except a little bit tartar. It's like tart English breakfast tea. <laughs> What's it good for? Kombucha is so great for your digestive system. I would almost dare to call it a di digestive tonic. It is so great for your digestive system. It's really great to replace a bad habit with a good habit. And you can do that with kombucha. You can actually break a sweet tea habit or a soda habit with kombucha. I'm proof. I told, I'm from the South. I lived in, I've lived in Texas my whole life except the last 15 years. And so... So I, until I was 30, like one or two, one, 31 actually, we moved to Colorado, but I, I was born and raised in Texas. I'm a sweet tea drinker. I'm a good Southern girl. We drink sweet tea. It's only been about eight months ago that I broke my sweet tea habit. I was drinking a gallon to a gallon and a half of sweet tea sweetened with real sugar. And <laughs> yes, I know. And so I needed, I needed to get rid of that extra sugar in my diet. And so I broke that habit with kombucha. And so I'm, I'm trading a bad habit for a, <laughs> for a good habit, right? So now I drink kombucha on a daily basis, but I have to tell you, it satisfies something in me that I don't even require a lot of sweets. I've even changed my sweet habits, like craving sweets. I have less of it. And I think it's because my digestive system, since I've been eating fermented foods, because this is considered a fermented drink. Um, but since I've been eating fermented foods, it's really changed. If you are buying bottled kombucha, it can be extremely expensive. If you're making your own, it's pennies on a dollar. So... Ah, look at you. <laughs> Move to Cali. Going back to Cali. Cali. Okay, sorry. Showing my age. Totally showing my age right there. Uh, which I've already told you, which is 45. I'll be 46 in August. So, <laughs> yes. So, I love it. I love it. So, we're going to grow our own. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's sometimes I grow, sometimes I ferment my own, and sometimes I don't have time, or we're traveling, or I'm just too busy to go through the process of it. Um, and I just, I buy GTs. But GTs is about $2.50 a bottle now. Um, when I first started drinking kombucha, which has not been that long ago, when I first started drinking kombuchas, a bottle of GTs, first of all, I could only get it in a health food store. This has been about eight months ago. I could only get it in a health food store. And second of all, it cost about five fifty a bottle. And Robin like had a cow. He was like, oh my God, what are you drinking? And why is it so expensive? I'm like, I know, I know, I'm sorry, but it's so good for me. And he's like, no, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll budget, we'll figure it out. So, but now in Colorado, we are about, uh, we are about $2.50. So, and that's at natural grocers. So if you have a natural grocers around you check because they have GTs and other brands on sale all the time. So yeah, but so I would safely say between 250 and 350, depending on where you are in the country and how popular it is where I live in Northern Colorado, it is all about being healthy, right? 
Yeah, I know. Target and Walmart carries it now. Good for GT, right? But it is all about being healthy where I live. Everybody is on a health journey of some kind. And so it's a very, very healthy community that I live in. So things are less expensive because they sell faster. So if you live in an area that it's not so popular, you might see that it's more expensive. So three something most of the time. Yep. Yeah. I know. He is a good guy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. H-E-B, you have it for two fifty. dollars Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't look at the price. Just ignore the price. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, but let's cut that price. Let's talk about ways that you can actually save some money and that is by growing your own SCOBY. We're not going to, I'm not going to teach you how to make kombucha today. Um, I'm actually going to point you later on this afternoon. There'll be a post go up on my website at go to kitchens.com. Excuse me. G O the number two kitchens.com G O the number two kitchens.com is my website this down here is for my class that I'm selling right now um, but go to kitchens.com there will be a how to make kombucha post and it's long because <laughs> it's not complicated but I didn't want to miss anything like I didn't want to miss any of the steps so you're in Virginia and it's three bucks yeah so <laughs> I know <laughs> I know it's true it's true how much fermented food until you don't need to supplement? Um, I would say eating fermented food every day for, and I'm just going to take a stab. I, I started stop. I stopped taking supplements. I almost said I started stop. Uh, I stopped taking supplements. Um, I was about three week, three weeks into my fermented food uh, journey. And that's because, this is gross and I'm sorry, but that's because I started experiencing a little bit of loose stool and I knew I was overdoing it on the uh, ferment, I mean, excuse me, on the probiotics, just the general probiotic intake. And so I started just with fermented foods at that point. And then it, and then everything started lining up. So Beaumont, east of Houston. Look at you. All right. <laughs> hey, you're back again to say that I'm so sweet. <laughs> Every time I live broadcast, you say that. Thank you. Just spent three three ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. So I have some tea that I have been artificially cooling. I'm sorry to say. I usually don't like to do that, but it's actually at a good temperature now. Um, but I have brewed. I have brewed here one cup. I wanted to brew it in a, my, my glass measuring cup so I could show you. I have brewed one cup of tea. Now, I use black tea. A lot of people use green tea. There's all kinds of teas that you could do. Don't use herbal teas and don't use flavored teas. So a nice clean black, a nice clean green is really the best. And your SCOBY will be used to whatever type of tea that you use, okay? So just keeping that in mind. And I would not use a decaf. Um, so this is what I use if you want to screenshot it. If you want to screenshot, this is what I use. I'll show you in Facebook in just a second. Nope, no sleepy times, no nothing like that. Yeah, just regular old tea. I would go with organic. I would always buy organic, and this is just a classic black. I'll show you here on Facebook if you want to have a look at that. And you can screenshot this, too, if you're on an iOS device and other devices like that. All right. So this is the type of tea that I use. And this is all I use this tea for is, is brewing kombucha. But I have one cup of water, purified water, uh, that I brought to a rolling boil with one tea bag that has steeped. To this nice dark color right so if you're using green tea it's not going to be this dark got it <clears throat> then i have a mason jar a nice clean mason jar doesn't have to be sterilized it just needs to be nice and clean i wouldn't use any harsh soaps or anything like that in it you can actually the harsh the antibacterial soaps will kill the bacteria that you're trying to grow so <laughs> just a nice delicate soap in there nothing antibacterial so that tea is going to go right in there. It's important. It is incredibly important that you cool your tea. Your tea should be absolutely room temperature, right? Um, <laughs> so room temperature is, uh, you don't have to use a thermometer, but you know what room temperature is. It should just be a nice room temperature. So nothing too cold or nothing too hot because you are trying to cultivate this this uh, bacteria and yeast to grow, right? Okay. So we have this, I'm sorry on, on, you can't see this. Let me move my camera down. Hold on guys. It's going to be some bounce. Let me hold that so you can see what I'm doing over here on, on Facebook. There we go. 
I was just, uh, you couldn't see anything. Hold on. Okay, we're all set up. Okay, so you have this, uh, this tea, and you just put that in a mason jar. Everybody with me so far? Now we're gonna take one tablespoon of sugar. One tablespoon, this is organic. This is organic pure cane sugar. Just a nice level tablespoon. We're gonna put that in there and we're gonna give it a good stir so it melts. We want it to melt in there. This is actually what is gonna feed the bacteria and yeast um, that will help it grow. Now, you can put your sugar in when you boil your water, and when you're making kombucha, actually brewing kombucha, that's what I recommend. But for this act, you can put it in after the fact and just give it a nice stir. So it's completely dissolved. I used to do this a lot in restaurants. This is a very familiar sound to me when I used to drink sweet tea all the time in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Getting my sugar to dissolve. Every restaurant you go into in the South, you hear that sound. <laughs> a local place uses honey. I actually wouldn't recommend honey. Yeah, coconut sugar is not good. Yeah, I actually would not recommend honey. Honey is antibacterial. Um, honey has amazing antibacterial products, uh, properties to it. I would actually recommend eating honey, but I wouldn't recommend using it to feed your SCOBY. Um, but pure, just pure organic cane sugar is what you want to look for there, as unprocessed as possible. So now I have my GTs, which I'm going to just take. Well, I can't do that because I don't want to. I don't want to put in my mouth. I'm going to leave a little bit so I can have a little sip. <laughs> so I'm going to take that and I'm going to fill up my jar. Super easy. Then I'm going to take a tea towel. See how easy this is? I'm gonna take a tea towel. I'm gonna to put it on top. I'm gonna to secure it with a rubber band, just like that. And I'm gonna put it in a nice space. It does not have to be hot. It does not have to be cold. You do not want it in direct sunlight at all. I'm gonna put it in a nice space somewhere in my house. And in about three to six weeks, depending on how much of the starter liquid that you use, um, three to six weeks, I am going to start to see a little SCOBY forming. And in about eight to nine weeks, I'm going to have a very thick, beautiful SCOBY like this. Yes, you can use coffee filters. That's a great idea. Yep. <laughs> Your SCOBY is angry. <laughs> right? I know. They need to be fed. Yeah. So that's how you grow your own SCOBY. How easy is that? I mean, seriously, it's really that easy. I promise you it's that easy. <laughs> so let me move this back up so I can see you guys properly. That is how easy it is to grow your own SCOBY. How many days? It's more like how many weeks? Um, three to six weeks. Depending on your environment, depending on your environment, it could change. Yes. I know. You absolutely can split the SCOBY. Great questions today, you guys. I mean, two thumbs up for these amazing questions. So you see here where I have, you can see the layers in my SCOBY. You see that? Those are actually ready to be split. So this is kind of like a little SCOBY hotel for me. So I use my SCOBYs in about probably like three to five brews, and then I start with a fresh SCOBY again. Now, a lot of people don't do that, and you don't have to do that, but because I don't brew continuously, my SCOBY gets a little, because I'm not feeding him all the time, and so I like to have a nice fresh SCOBY to start with. So instead of just getting rid of that SCOBY, I do all kinds of things with it. They're actually great in your flower beds. Just make it where your pets can't dig it up. Uh, so once you're ready to drink the liquid, you reuse the SCOBY. Yes, you can absolutely do that. So let me finish my thought and we'll go back to that in just a second. There's so many topics we could talk about. Uh, you can add sugar midway. That will help this uh, keep it from getting kind of vinegary and then you could actually drink it. Um, but yes, so <laughs> my SCOBYs that I no longer use are just kind of feel worn out. Um, I actually repurpose them either in smoothies. I put them in my garden. Um, I do all kinds of things with them. I mean, you can chunk up this smooth, the put it in squares and keep them in your refrigerator and just stick them in your smoothie. And it's like a probiotic powerhouse in your body so yes yeah maybe you didn't give it enough that is yeah the sugar is dissolved yeah yeah the sugar is dissolved in the bottom of that 
Oh, that's my other SCOBY. Yes, I dissolve the sugar completely. Um, I do not do continuous brew. I can give you some instructions on doing continuous brew. Have I know lots of people who do. Um, I actually do in batches because of the way my time schedule is. So, yes. So what happens after you have this liquid is ready to go? So just really super briefly, right? What if you go out of town? It's okay. It's all right. Don't panic. Nobody panic. <laughs> so, um, so after this, this is going to be your starter. So if you grow a SCOBY, right? <laughs> don't panic. Please don't panic. Um, if you grow a SCOBY, and you're ready to make kombucha. So let's say we're going to take this SCOBY, which is a beautiful SCOBY, by the way. So healthy, so beautiful. Um, but let's say we're going to take this SCOBY and we're going to start a kombucha batch. So we take this liquid and this SCOBY and start the batch. But we brew way more tea. We brew like five to six bags of tea. And we use about a cup of sugar in a large gallon bucket. This SCOBY will then start to actually expand and fill up the top of that gallon glass jar that I use. And in about five to six days, I will have kombucha. So that's how you would brew. Now, there's a lot more steps than that. I just really simplified a process there for you. So, but yes, absolutely. What happens if you go on vacation? I have, I purposefully left this SCOBY in my brewing area, which is the shower floor of a guest bed bathroom. <laughs> it's nice and dark and quiet in there and SCOBYs like it to be nice and quiet and they don't like angry arguments. And I mean, it's funny, the things are, you have to think of them as a plant. You have to think of them as you're growing a plant, essentially, that you're going to consume. And so... I actually leave mine in the guest floor, shower floor, and so I purposefully left this in there for, it was almost nine weeks and never touched it, never added sugar, never did anything. I just looked at it a couple of times. I was like, wow, it's just really going to town on that SCOBY. And when I open it now even, it doesn't, it doesn't even have a vinegary smell. It smells like perfect kombucha. So when I was ready, I was doing it for this class because I wanted to give you guys trial and error information, right? So when I was ready for it to come out of there and to start a kombucha brew with it, which will be its next step, that's what we'll do next, what I will do next with it, is start a kombucha brew. When I start that, um, then I, I want it to kind of go dormant. So I put a lid, a regular lid on it and I put it in the refrigerator and the refrigerator, I'm pointing that way cause my refrigerator is right over there. <laughs> so, but I put it back in the refrigerator. Now this does not stop the SCOBY from feeding or growing. It just slows the process. It almost goes, the SCOBY almost goes into hibernation. So does that make sense? Makes sense. So if you're going on vacation um, and you're, you know, you're thinking, oh, my SCOBY's going to be done before I get back or whatever, you can stick it in the fridge, and you'll probably still do a, uh, still do a fine kombucha brew. So absolutely, absolutely. What are the questions? I know I missed a bunch because I was trying to focus on answering questions intelligently. So yes. Absolutely. Uh, Heather's asking, she says over here on Facebook, I didn't know that I could use prepared kombucha as a starter. Absolutely, you can do that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> a little scoby bear. I know. People name them. I have a friend that names all of hers. So what does it smell like? Does it smell like vinegar? Um, I wouldn't say vinegar. I would say more like apple cider. Right? Those of you that drink kombucha, do you, do you agree with me there? Um, that, that it smells, kombucha smells like apple cider vinegar. So not like straight up white vinegar, but like an apple cider vinegar. Yes. Okay. You hear some are fake. I, when I'm growing a SCOBY, I only use GT's original. You can, you can make SCOBY snacks. You can make fruit leather. Absolutely. Yeah. They smell very similar. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have a swig. Mm. There's a big piece of SCOBY in this one. Can you see? I'm not going to pour it out. I don't think you can see. Hold on. See down in there? This is normal when you're drinking kombucha that you will have pieces of SCOBY that break off. I'll show you guys on, <laughs> on Facebook in just a second. See that in there? 
yeah, that's very normal. It's going to happen to you as well um, when you when you make your own kombucha. So <laughs> you're still very leery. I love it. I love it. No backwash. Ew. Can you see that piece in there? See that right up in there? That's a piece of the SCOBY, the original SCOBY from this brew. Yeah. I don't think you should fear getting sick. I mean, I I have been around people brewing kombucha and I have been I've been brewing kombucha on my own. It's not really a science. It's just a do these instructions kind of thing. And I have I don't I just don't think I've ever known of anybody getting sick. Yeah. I just don't think I've ever has anybody ever heard of anybody getting sick on kombucha? Maybe maybe you drank like 3 of these in a day and you're not going to get sick, you're going to get the poop. So I know. Yeah. Did you get it? Have you been sick once doing it? Yeah. Um, I have never gotten mold. No. It went bad. Oh, you got really bad gas. I could see that happening, actually. Yeah, you can't leave it in your car. This is not, think of, I treat, treat kombucha like you would treat milk. This is what I always tell people. Treat kombucha like you would treat milk. You would not leave a carton of milk in your car while you went in grocery shopping, would you? So don't do that with your kombucha. I know Sandy, <laughs> Sandy had, Sandy brewed, uh, kind of forgot about hers and it turned into vinegar and we were like, what can you do with it? And so we were like salad dressings and you can use it for cleaning products and, oh, you could use it as a toner for your face. And yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you those raw oysters are way more dirty than the SCOBY will ever be. The SCOBY is actually really clean. It keeps itself really clean. People get hung up. I wish somebody would like make an announcement that we're changing the name of it, right? Because it's like a scientific name. It's like an acronym for the scientific thing of what it is. Um, but you know, if we just called it a kombucha starter and nobody ever talked about what it really was, then people would be like, yeah, I'm totally drinking that. <clears throat> I, I like oysters too. Oh, bad pistachios are gross. I agree. Okay, you guys stay with me here on uh, on Periscope. I'm going to let you guys go over here. If you're over here on Facebook and you want to jump on Periscope, I'm going to be over there for just a few more minutes. So thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, type them below. I will actually still reply to them after this live broadcast, and I'd be happy to help you get your, um, get your kombucha started. <laughs> Start your scobies. So thank you so much for watching. Go to kitchens.com. It'll be in a link right below this. And uh, if I think about it, Sometimes I forget, but if I think about it, I will actually put the link to the kombucha. So how to make your own kombucha when it's up this afternoon. So right here, right below this broadcast. Thank you guys for being here. Bye. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, my home brew, I can never get super fizzy because I do not do second ferments. So yeah. Home brew is way yummier. In my opinion, it's way, way yummier than store-bought. Yes, you can absolutely flavor. Yeah, absolutely you can flavor your uh, kombucha. I would not use vanilla extract because that's alcohol and you will kill your SCOBY. I just totally missed a giant comment. You guys are going so fast today. I can't keep up with comments. I'm sorry. Beer? Just a question mark. Beer? Can you flavor it with beer? No. <laughs> Second ferment is, um, so a lot of times people will uh, do one ferment and they will remove their SCOBY. They will take their SCOBY out of their ferment. They'll put their cheesecloth. And if you've ever made kombucha, you'll understand. And once you read the blog post, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, but they put the cheesecloth back on without the SCOBY in there and let it ferment for five to seven more days. That will give you a second ferment um, and make it really tart. You'll get a nice tart kombucha if you do that. Um, less sweets because there's still SCOBY bits in there eating up all the sugar. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. So that's a second ferment. And then you can also second ferment if you want to add fruit at that point. So if you wanted to add, you know, peaches or pears or whatever flavor, a coconut, whatever flavor you wanted, you would puree it and add it at that point to your kombucha. Um, or you can just cut it, rough cut it and put it in top and then strain it out to flavor if you want to have a mild flavor or puree it to give it a really nice big thick flavor of the what the flavor you're trying to go for. Um, and put that in your kombucha and then bottle it. So, yes. <laughs> I know. Kombucha will explode too. You need to be careful sealing it tightly. So, yes. 
Uh, when you move it from refrigerator, do you bring it to room temperature? You mean before I do this SCOBY that's already grown here, will I let it go to room temperature? Not necessarily. I mean, by the time I'm ready to use him, he's kind of ready to do, he's already there. But no, not necessarily. I suppose you could. It'd probably be best practices to do that, but I don't always do that. So, yeah. Didn't use organic tea or sugar. Um... I don't think you have to toss it. I would probably just switch now. I mean, your SCOBY's gonna be fine. It, when you get trouble is when you're trying to switch, um, switch from like green tea to black tea, then you get some, you know, you, or vice versa, or to some other type of tea, your SCOBY might get a little funky in between because it's like, hey, what's this? I don't know what this is. It doesn't recognize what kind of tea it is. So, but I've had people that have just ditched the black tea and started with green tea again, and the SCOBY did fine. So it's probably just all based on the general health of your SCOBY, so. <laughs> I know. Janie thinks that there is uh, aliens every fermenting week. But you do make kraut now. I do know that you make sauerkraut. <laughs> Any more questions about, uh, about SCOBY making? <laughs> I would just say go make some babies, but don't do that. It is correct that you should not use metal. Yeah, so if I was transporting, let's say that I was gonna give this SCOBY away, right? And I was gonna take it to a friend or I was gonna stick it in the mail to somebody or something like that. Um, I would actually put, which I don't love to do, but I would actually put a piece of plastic uh, wrap between the lid and the glass because I wouldn't want the liquid to slosh around and, and get on the metal. It's very corrosive um, to the metal and you can actually leach some things back into the metal that you probably don't, uh, back into the, to the liquid that you don't want it in there. The other problem is, is that sometimes if you use metal, um, it's too sharp or too rigid for the SCOBY. I always recommend wood um, or glass when you are even brewing or handling SCOBYs or anything like that. The other thing is, is when you're handling your SCOBY, and it's why I'm not taking mine out and showing you because I don't feel like my hands are clean enough, um, but I wash my hands really, really well before I handle my SCOBY. I know people who use plastic gloves uh, or like rubber gloves Loves to handle their SCOBY because they don't want it to get messed up. So, sauerkraut is on the website. Basic sauerkraut. This is brand new to the website. I've been promising it for quite a while. Go to kitchens.com. It's one going to be one of the first posts that you see on the homepage. I got to sneeze. Excuse me, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Sorry. One of the first, I may have to do it again, actually. Um, yes, soap and water, but nothing antibacterial if you can help it. To get it more sour, you want it to ferment longer. The longer it ferments, the more sour it will get. I know, don't sneeze near your SCOBY. <laughs> yeah. Damp down the kraut. That's right. Yes. Okay, I'm going to have another drink because I just sneezed and I feel like I need a drink. Ah, oh, so good. I love kombucha. I'm a kombucha head. <laughs> Total kombucha head. I've tried so many crazy flavors. Oh my gosh, I've tried crazy, crazy flavors. And it's, uh, it's, I love it all. <laughs> crazy flavors. I had the sun-dried tomato. That was interesting. That's great. I love that. I love that you use a five, I want a five-gallon oak barrel. Where do I get that? Ah, good for you. I, I'm like, what? I want a five-gallon oak barrel. Where do I get one of those? That's awesome. Um, I do not talk about flavored uh, recipes. This is just going to be a basic kombucha. Um, I have to tell you, my website is geared towards basic information you know, for this kind of fermenting stuff. So has this whole week been that way? So I don't like to overwhelm people, so it is not there. When you drink the SCOBY, can you feel its texture? Try to shake up the bottle. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I would not shake my kombucha ever. <laughs> they should put that on the bottle. Never, ever, ever shake kombucha. <laughs> Don't shake your kombucha because it's effervescent, especially store-bought like GTs. There's a lot of fizz in this. So, I know. When you do that, you get kablooey. Absolutely. They do have it on there. I've never, I don't think I've ever looked. Never, never shake your kombucha. Yeah, so when I get down to the bottom, so most of the SCOBY lays down here. I give it, when I open it, I give it a couple of turns just slightly 
just to kind of mix up a little bit. And then when I get to the bottom, I swish. Swish and sip. That's the new term for it. Hmm. Good tip. I love that. Yeah. Swish, right? <laughs> Shake your booty, not your kombucha. <laughs> That's right. Swish and sip. Got it? Yeah, thanks for that. I'm going to have to watch replay, so I can, I'm going to have to watch my own replay, so I can fast forward to that. I, I know. Ah! Just have some store-bought until then. It's okay. You can cheat on your SCOBY. <laughs> you can cheat on your SCOBY and buy store-bought. It's okay. They don't know. They don't have ears or anything. Although, if they can hear, and send, I don't know. Maybe they do. Hmm. <laughs> All right, you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's very sweet of you to say that. You can't watch food scopes. Oh, I know, right? Because it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> See, they are aliens. <laughs> Sherry, I did. <laughs> That's awesome. You guys are funny. <laughs> All right. I know, right? I understand. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I hope you learned something about making your own SCOBY. It's so, so easy. Growing your own SCOBY is super, super simple. So before I let you guys off the hook here today, um, is there anybody here that is not already signed up for Kitchen Atomy? I know there's several of you that are already signed up. I love that. Thank you. That really makes my day. I'm serious. That totally... You totally make my day when you say that, that you're that you're being conscious and mindful about what you're eating because of my periscopes. That's what I'm here for. Have some fun. Teach you some fun stuff. So I know that is totally awesome. Makes my stinking day. So anybody that is not signed up for Kitchen Atomy uh, already or has not already heard about it, is there anybody here that's interested in hearing more about Kitchen Atomy? <laughs> that's okay it's not it's not a next time there's no next time uh, it will be open enrollment from now on now that we've opened enrollment it will be open enrollment from now on you just won't be able to get the $99 price <laughs> I'm sorry to say um, but yes so you won't be able to get the night it'll be $149 um, after the pre-sale and I'm sorry if I missed it because I was answering Sonia um, if is anybody interested it's cool if you're not I'm I'm here to just give you information, free, helpful, affordable <laughs> information. But if you want to know about that, you're interested. Okay, thank you, Tracy. Got to get that SCOBY going, Sherry. Text, I mean, text me, email me or uh, send me a message on Facebook and I'll help you. Ah, yay, I love it, I love it. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Sandy, for sharing. By the way, thank you guys for participating in the Instagram photos uh, contest. It's been amazing. I've just had so much fun with it. I did it on a whim. I woke up on what uh, Sunday morning and I was like, oh, this would be, I think I'm going to do this. This would be fun. And <laughs> it's like turned into this whole big contest and it's so much fun. I love doing it. So yeah, it's on Instagram. Uh, it actually ends tomorrow and we're going to announce a winner. But, uh, but, and I'll do more because they're just so much fun. We'll pick another subject and we'll do more because it's just a lot of fun. So thank you guys for participating in that. It's been a blast. So go to uh, go to kitchens.com. This is the website. This is the only place that you can buy this right now is on this particular website. The main, the top, right, the this right here, go to kitchens.com is my main website. Forward slash kitchenatomy, spelled with A's, you can see here, spelled with A's is my new class. And this class is all about kitchen detox. Now I can tell you that I have been with a producer and a cameraman. You want to screenshot that? You guys want to screenshot that and then we'll go from there. So I can put the sign down. Got it? Everybody got it? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Janie. <laughs> Robin found that for me at Michael's. It's like, this would be perfect for you right to your Kitchen Atomy on. I was like, you rock. I'm my husband rocks. Anyway, okay. So Kitchen Atomy is all about detoxing your kitchen because it is my opinion that at your health journey starts in your kitchen and you need to get it in order. You need to get it you need to get it right. It needs to be a place that you love to be in, not a place that you dread to be in, not a place where you're like, dang, I gotta go cook. <laughs> not that kind of place. A place that you're like, 
heck yeah, it's dinner time. I'm going to go cook, right? <laughs> that's what you need to, that's the impression that you need, right? That's the impression that I want you to walk away from or walk away with when you complete Kitchen Anatomy. Now, I can tell you I was with my producer all week and my cameraman. We started on Wednesday, not all week, but we started on Wednesday. We wrapped up this morning. We filmed all 10 classes, a bonus class, the introduction, the end, and something else in there we did, and I can't remember. Anyway, and we got through, and my, you know, everybody says, it's a wrap, we're done. That means when you say it's a wrap, I didn't know really ever. I mean, I knew that that meant that you were through, but what that means is it signals like all the camera people and the light people and everything that they can disassemble equipment and that we can unstage everything. And so I know that now, because I've done this a couple of times now. So they said it's a wrap, and my producer, Melanie, was like, I, I have like 20 people that need this class, like right now. And I'm like, hook them up. <laughs> Let's do this. And she's like, this is so amazing. The content, and she's not even read the textbook. She's only, we've only done the filming. She's just, you know, barely browsed the textbook. And she's like, this is so amazing. I learned so much sitting here watching you film this because she's like my producer director she's like it was just I I can't believe she was shopping online for my suggestions during the class she was like oh my goodness I have to change that and she's like D -d 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 -d. shopping online while we're filming the class is hilarious so it's about physically detoxing the kitchen it's about getting out toxins in the kitchen like physical toxins that you need to contemplate there's actually only three that I that I address um, if you can believe that when we talk about kitchens um, but really, it's about detoxing the mindset against the kitchen. And I'm so passionate about getting people back in the kitchen. Think of my business name, Go To Kitchens. I'm subliminally telling you all the time. <laughs> I know, right? So I'm subliminally telling you all the time, Go To Kitchens. <laughs> Go to your kitchen. <laughs> Get in that kitchen. <laughs> So that is what it's about, and it's a starting point for the Go To Kitchens Academy. Now I can tell you our next class is already in the works. We're finishing up this one. Our next class is already in the brainstorming. It's going to be a completely free class, and guess what it's going to be on? Fermenting! And it's going to be called Ferment Your Brains Out. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So it's going to be called, I'm sorry, that name still makes me just crack up. Yes, Ferment Your Brains Out. And that class is going to be completely free. Now, it's not completely free for those of you that sign up, just for those of you that sign up at Kitchen Anatomy. It is free to everyone. And we're going to offer that one free. And then we're going to have another class releasing this summer. So coming this summer, um, we have another concept that is kind of in the brainstorming process as well. And it's going to be kind of the next step to Kitchen Anatomy. So you have Kitchen Anatomy, and then the next class is going to be that next step. So we're going to keep that going. We're going to keep that momentum going. And some classes are going to be $150. This first one, in pre-sale right now, it's $99. That ends the end of this month. So if you're thinking about buying the class and you want the best deal, then you need to, you need to buy it now because it will never be $99 again. Never. I promise you there will never be another sales code that says, hey, you get this because we're not selling enough, so we're going to sell it for $99. That's not how it's happening. It's $99 in presale. You become a charter member of the GoTo Kitchens Academy at that point. <laughs> Thank you. You will be a charter member of the GoTo Kitchens Academy at that point. And you will get discounts on all future classes. Now, I can't discount the free ones. <laughs> Those are just free. But all future classes you will get a discount on. So it is worth your $99. If you continue to take my classes, you'll make your $99 back at some point. So really, this class is free too. We're not going to pay them to take the free classes? No. Robin said we can't pay you to take the free classes. <laughs> So that's what Kitchen Anatomy is. I hope to see you guys over there. The tagline for it is, is your kitchen sick? And really what it should be is, is your mindset about your kitchen sick? So, <laughs> right? He's so funny. He's like, you mean you're not paying people to take the free classes? <laughs> no. Yeah. So class is amazing. It's a 10-step kitchen detox. It's totally self not. It's not self-guided. It is self-paced. That's the right word. I know. 
totally just comes, walks by, interjects humor, walks away. That's just how he is. So, but is totally self-guided. There is not a start date. There's not a date that we start class and a date that we end class. It is not, you don't have to be present for any classes. All the classes are at your own pace. You go, and I wanted it to be that way because I wanted you to do these tasks in order and to get you to do them in order. I didn't want there to be a, and next week we're gonna learn this, and next week we're gonna learn that because some of the tasks may take you a couple of weeks to accomplish. So, and some may take you a couple of days and you're on to the next class. So, and that's how it's designed. It's designed self paced Now we do have a Facebook group. Uh, Janie, who is here right now, Sam and Janet, um, she is actually an ambassador over on that page. So if you sign up, you can tag her, her or me over there. There she is. There's Janie right there. Um, <laughs> I know totally the coolest um, but uh, that's Janie that just said Robin is the coolest so she's over on the Facebook page with me we are interacting we're talking I'm doing many classes over there I'm actually handing out many tips and many informations to get your mindset right about taking the class and so that's already happening so if you want to sign up go to kitchens.com kitchenatomy is the website $99 pre-sale it goes up to 149 at the end of the month <laughs> I know it is right uh, this time it was just uh, it was just the cameraman and my producer, yeah, and me. So we've had more, <laughs> a lot more actually, but this time it was just us. We figured that we could do it, and I needed to save money, <laughs> so it was just the three of us. I didn't pay myself anything. Stinky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our cameraman did all the rigging and everything, so it was good. It was good. He was our he was our cameraman, which he's awesome. I worked with him several times. He's great. And my producer is amazing. Melanie's great. And if you want an amazing producer with an amazing cameraman that comes along, um, you guys should check out 12 Forward. If you are a um, if you are a health and wellness professional, you should check out 12 Forward. Their website's not so fancy, but you can find contact information there. How do I pay myself? That's a good question. I'll let you know when I find out, Sherry. <laughs> I've been at this for a year and I haven't made any money. In fact, I'm in the hole. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Nope. And that's fine. I'm going to keep at it. Nothing can stop me. Nothing. Nothing can stop me. I'm on a mission to change millions of people's lives. I don't know if I ever say that anymore, but it's true. I'm on a mission to help millions of people change their lives. So <laughs> I know. You know what? And I could care less, honestly. It is not, uh, I get I get criticized constantly by other business people because I'm not money minded. I, you know, and that's what they say to me. You don't have, you don't, you're not money minded. And I'm like, I know it's awesome, right? I, I know, <laughs> I know that I'm not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you feel the same way. Yeah, I know, I'm just not money minded. Money's great, I know it'll come. I'm not even worried about it. It doesn't even stress me out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, when I get I criticism is maybe like it's helpful criticism. I mean, it, yeah. So change minded. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. It's always I promise you, no matter what happens with go to kitchens, um, you will always have free content. It will always. Thank you, Sandy. You will always have free content. You will. There will always be things to buy, but there will always, 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 always be great, amazing. Some of my best content will come to you absolutely free. I promise. It's my promise to you. I'll never get too big for my britches that way, where I'm not handing out free content to the masses. So, yeah. Okay, guys. I'm gonna scat out. Thank you for the amazing yesterday in broadcast. I asked about. What would you guys like to hear about comfort food next week? What would you like for me to remake? And you gave me, you're welcome, you're welcome. I don't say all that to like get a pat on the back. I just say it because it's the truth. So, scat, splat, scat. Splat's not even here today. Hmm. <laughs> I forgot to put him out here. I was kind of in a hurry. <laughs> I like ran in here and set up to do this periscope. So, because we were kind of, I know he's totally hiding. Because they wanted to catch an earlier flight and uh, and I wanted to do this. So, yeah, Ty Bollinger is doing amazing things. Yeah. Yay. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much for being here. You guys make the world turn. <laughs> All right. Splat doesn't like Scoby. I get it. I get it. Scoby and Mason have a thing going on, you know? So. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Alien info. Janie. 
All right. I will see you next Monday. I'm taking the weekend off. You'll be so proud of me. Um, I'm taking the weekend off. And so I will be back on Monday with you guys. Hopefully my voice will be better. I've been talking straight for three days and my voice is a little crackly. So yeah. Yay, Sherry. Sherry's lost some way. Hey, Sherry's lost some way. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Sherry. Congratulations. I'm super excited for you. That's cool. Very, very cool. Uh, thank you. I know. I'm excited. I've been, we've been working really, really hard this week. Both Robin and I have been working our tails off. He's been holding <laughs> Scobie and Mason. Scobie and Mason sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Okay, sorry. I don't want, don't put them in a tree. They might fall and break. Uh... <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. Hey, seriously, Sherry, if you want to write that up and send me a message in Facebook or uh, email me, I would love, I love that kind of information. I use it all the time. So that's very helpful for me. So darn, I know what you meant, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mason, shame on you. <laughs> Oh, you guys are the best. All right. Love you so much. There'll be a winner announced tomorrow of the Instagram contest. So check it out. If you want to go on Instagram and type in hashtag G, the number two K real food, G two K real food. <laughs> um, you can see the photos that have been entered already on Instagram. And there's some great, I mean, there's some amazing photography in there. You guys are, you guys are doing great. So uh, yes, so that is, I'm giving away a giant gift tomorrow. Somebody tomorrow is going to win a giant gift from Go To Kitchens. So, <laughs> didn't start, oh, you didn't start your Instagram yet? Yeah, that's okay. There'll be more. Hey, Becky, thanks for being here. We're just leaving, but thanks for coming in. <laughs> And saying hi. All right. Love you guys so much. Have a great weekend. Do something extraordinary. Take good care of yourself. Get lots of rest. Play with your family. Have fun. Don't stress. Live life. Enjoy the beautiful spring that we're having all over the country right now. Except in Houston. Pray for Houston because they're still flooded in a lot of areas. And yes. So you guys do something extraordinary. And eat beautifully. Like eat so well that you think, oh, Leslie would be so proud of me today. <laughs> I get that all the time. You'd be so proud of me today, what I ate. Yes, love that. All right, you guys, bye. I love you so much. <laughs>